In addition to strikes, there were tenants' movements and unemployed councils. Here, Rose Chernin describes organizing her neighborhood. We wanted unemployment insurance. We wanted home relief, hot meals for children in schools, and housing for the destitute people living in the city dumps. In that time, who heard of the eight-hour day? Even the idea of a union was in this time a new concept in the world. No one expected decent wages. The others with the privilege were born up there, but we were on the bottom. To us, the idea that we had the right to strike was something hard to even imagine. So what could be done about all this? We began to organize. We formed unemployed councils. They were spontaneous people's organizations. We would open an office in the middle of a neighborhood. We organized around our basic needs. The women were organized to monitor the prices of food all the time. We picketed with the sign, don't patronize this grocery, they're charging too much for bread. Nobody would cross our picket lines. By that time, our workers were everywhere, leading demonstrations, circulating petitions, speaking on the street corners. So we would go into the building, introduce ourselves, and ask the people to organize. We promised that we would fight the evictions and help to take care of the people who were thrown out. I would address the crowd gathered in the street below. People, fellow workers, we are the wives of unemployed men and the police are evicting us. Today we are being evicted. Tomorrow it will be you. We have no jobs. We can't afford food. Our rents are too high. The marshal has brought the police to carry out our furniture. Are you going to let it happen? As soon as they were gone, the people standing around would pick up the furniture and carry it right back into the building. We'd break the lock, put back the furniture, install a new lock, and the landlord would have to go through the whole procedure another time. Within two years, we had rent control in the Bronx.